This video is sponsored by Paradox Interactive. Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today I'm working in collaboration with the folks over at Paradox Interactive to show you the upcoming expansion for Age of Wonders Planetfall, Star Kings. We'll be focusing specifically on one aspect of this DLC, and that's the new faction of the Oathbound. Who they are, what makes them tick, and what you should look out for as you dive in with these honor-bound mech suit piloting knights and their fortune-telling, fate-bending witches and wizards. If you'd like to learn more about the DLC and perhaps pick it up, don't hesitate to check out the link in the description and pinned comment down below. But with that said, let's begin. The Power of Status Status effects, that is. The ability to tell and change what's about to happen before it happens can be extremely helpful on the battlefield, and the Oathbound's Seers allow for exactly that. A variety of status effects that apply on friendly and enemy troops will give you defensive and offensive capabilities that can help you overcome the harshest of odds with proper use. Precognition allows a friendly unit to completely ignore one attack that would otherwise do direct damage to them. It can be stacked up to two stacks on a single unit and is an excellent way to either protect a unit that finds itself in a particularly threatened position or to extend the survivability of your heavy hitters, making them all the more terrifying. Keep in mind that Precognition doesn't care for the quantity of damage coming in. As long as it's directly targeting the unit, one stack of Precognition will be used to protect against it. This means a wise opponent will use weaker attacks against a unit with Precognition first before targeting it with higher damage output attacks. Heroes with intuitive strike skill will cause more damage when they have Precognition, and the Oracle's Favor skill will give the units in the hero's army a stack of Precognition at the start of battle. Pre-Battle Predictions is an early doctrine operation that gives all units a stack of Precognition to start, and this is an invaluable operation. It literally protects all of your units from the first hit they receive in battle. Some units will have abilities that give friendly units a stack of Precognition, and among the unit mods, Time Thread Data Scrolls, available in the late game, is able to apply a stack of Precognition to the modded unit if there isn't already one applied. It also buffs shields, but that's another matter entirely. Providence, meanwhile, guarantees the affected unit will get critical hits on its attacks. This can absolutely and completely shift the tide of battle in one turn. A guaranteed critical hit can take out or otherwise cripple high-value targets, and the very availability of Providence might make an opponent hesitant about being overly aggressive with certain units. Momentary Insight is a tactical operation available early on that can give any friendly unit Providence for one turn at minimal cost, and certain units will be able to give the Gift of Providence to friendlies, giving them Providence for a turn. The Plight Mitigator mod, meanwhile, dispels status effects once every three turns, and when it does so, it applies Providence to the unit for a turn. Apart from that, the mod also buffs shields and stops the unit from naturally fumbling and missing, ever. And just to be crystal clear, the critical hits from Providence apply across multiple strikes in an attack. So, if one of your units is able to strike, say, three times using a single action, each of those strikes will be treated as critical hits. You can see how quickly this can become a problem for your enemies. As the Oracle foretold. Adversity, meanwhile, is the exact opposite of Providence. Applied on an enemy unit, it will force their attacks to fumble and miss. This will more or less completely nullify the danger posed by the affected unit and is best used against the most threatening units on the other side of the field. The Watcher unit, available relatively early on, is able to use the Lash of Adversity to potentially hit multiple units with a status effect for one turn with only a three turn cooldown. So, if you find yourself standing against a Watcher, make sure not to keep your soldiers too tightly packed lest they get struck by the Lash. The Battle Pattern Analyzer mod is a great way for units to gain the Quick Strike action that lets them potentially hit an enemy with adversity. The Direct Tribulation Strategic Operation, meanwhile, is a late game operation that hits all units in an army with adversity for three turns when successful. As you can imagine, that can more or less 
and the oath bound the victory right away unless the affected army has reinforcements or is otherwise able to remove status effects quickly. Erratic Misfortune, meanwhile, is available a little bit sooner, and it's a tactical operation that hits units in a 2 hex radius with the chance to be struck by either adversity or fatalism. Which brings us to fatalism. This makes the targeted unit 100% easier to hit and forces it to fail all of its resistance checks. This can be especially helpful when you're up against an enemy faction that is resistant to your damage types, but is also otherwise just generally helpful in scoring hits. Oathbound Hackers, only available under the right secret technology, will have the added ability called the Fatalism Demon, giving a chance to apply Fatalism for two turns on the targeted enemy unit. The Diviner, available to all Oathbound, is able to hit people with the Curse of Inevitability. The Butterfly Effect Tactical Operation, meanwhile, hits a unit with three turns of Fatalism, and it also hits them with a Butterfly Effect, which means that if it dies, it might transfer both of those statuses to any allied units within a small radius. Now where things get really interesting here, in my opinion, is with Expedite Doom, a late game tactical operation that can potentially instantly kill units with Adversity, Fatalism, or the Doomed status effects, no matter their strength or current health. Extremely potent stuff. Support the troops. Fighting as brothers and sisters in arms is a crucial part of the Oathbound's approach to the battlefield. All factions have support units of some form or another, sure, but beyond that, the Oathbound can use units with the Record Keeper trait to improve experience gain rates, and they can make some of the best use of adjacency. And I'm not just talking about how the towering battle suits act as tall cover for smaller units. Scryers are able to provide precognition to units while the Warden is able to deploy the Warden's Banner, or use the Inspiring Warden ability to help friendly units in both defensive and offensive manners. Augurs can provide the Gift of Adamance, allowing an otherwise dying unit to survive for a little while longer, while the Diviner can not only provide units in a small radius with Precognition, but can also significantly heal or even resurrect fallen units. Watchers are able to provide Providence for a turn, with a three-turn cooldown, and Oathbound Star Guides, available with the right secret technology, can also provide Providence for a turn with a three-turn cooldown. Things get especially interesting with the Paladins. The Paladin Protector can heal all units within a radius around them, removing psionic effects, and also giving Tier 1 and 2 units Heroism, a status that allows them to cause more damage against higher tier enemy units. Their defense mode, Protector Shields is also particularly helpful to adjacent allies, granting a buff to shields alongside benefits to itself. Now, though this can't be stacked with overlapping Protector Shields, an additional two levels of shielding is nothing to scoff at, especially against the appropriate damage types. The Paladin Exemplar in Shield mode has Protector Shields as well, but can also use Ordain Shield to give a target friendly plus four to shields. This will switch it to Glaive mode, changing its abilities, removing these shielding capabilities. Now with a few mods, these Paladins and their shield buffing capabilities can be further supplemented with more adjacency bonuses. The Oath of Loyalty mod will add an extra point of armor to the modded unit itself, but will also add an extra point of armor to any adjacent unit with an Oath mod on it as well. The Beacon of Hope mod will heal the modded unit and friendly units around it in a 3 hex radius with 10 hit points at the end of each turn on top of giving the modded unit extra armor. Think about the survivability there for not just the unit itself, but all of the units around it as well. Now, naturally, these mods don't have to be applied to paladins, but you can see how these large battle suits can act as pillars surrounded by lower tier troops that use the buffs to be worth more than their cost in production and upkeep. Alternatively, just have stacks of battle suits that just support each other. Either way, moving in lockstep works to great advantage for the Oathbound. Defensively, the Oathbound are able to use the Protector Program Strategic Operation early on to get a Paladin Protector to join in on any defensive battle within a colony. Also, don't hesitate to build the Banners of Protection to help colony militia when defending against enemy attacks. And 
on the topic of colony improvement, A Game of Thrones. Following the general theme of a feudal society, your heroes can be assigned as lords of your various colonies, with each of your heroes being able to take on one that it'll be linked to. The first order of business is to unlock one of three colony lord skills made available at level 2. Each of these will focus on buffing different aspects of your colonies and will have an aspect that is always active and another that is only active when the hero is within their colony's domain. Each of these will unlock a second tier of buffs that can be acquired at a later level and a properly specced lord or lady of a properly specced colony will significantly improve its capabilities when matched up appropriately. It's simple mathematics. A 10% increase to a bigger number is a bigger buff than a 10% increase to a smaller number. So make sure to link and unlink your lords appropriately to maximize the benefits. And this can be done either by selecting the colony and assigning a lord directly, or through the hero's screen itself. It's also not a bad idea to build the throne structure in a colony that has a lord. Locked behind the People's Contracts Society tech, building the throne in a colony will allow it to retain 50% of the benefits from the associated lord that would otherwise only apply if the lord was in the colony domain. That means you don't have to play overly defensively, but there is an extra element of advantage to doing so. Now this sounds maybe like a bit of a small point, but it can be used to gain an early advantage in tech, production, or population growth. And it can be used to amplify energy or cosmite production, further strengthening your faction in the early game. That's not to say that there aren't advantages in the later game as well. In fact, the percentage-based buffs alone are worth that much more the further along a game goes. But going in with the extra skill points right at the start isn't a bad idea either. It's also worth noting that any hero of any faction or technology can be made a lord if they join you when you're playing as the Oathbound. Reputation matters. Changing things up from a constant state of war and conquest, the Oathbound are able to gain some hefty advantages with higher levels of reputation. Whether you do it by establishing non-aggression pacts and alliances, by helping NPC factions with quests and demands, or by sending gifts, a higher reputation works to your advantage in a variety of ways. Early on, the Duty of Care Doctrine operation increases the relations and influence gain from quests with a 20% gain per level of reputation above neutral. These can in turn be used to acquire holdings of particular value or to buy higher quality units or mods that your opponents will not have access to until the later stages of the game. Honor and Unity, meanwhile, can greatly increase food and happiness production. This can help maintain control in otherwise unruly colonies while also increasing population growth rates and increasing the chance of happiness events that can give substantial buffs to research, production, growth, and more. And that's not all. Any hero with the Oracle's protege skill will see a decent bump to their health and armor for each level of reputation above neutral as well. It's not a bad idea, as such, to befriend those that will join your cause or are otherwise not in your way, be they NPC factions or other player factions, the occasional treaty or gift can go a long way in helping you stand against your enemies. In fact, with an early focus on developing without warfare, allying or establishing non-aggression pacts with all other factions right at the beginning isn't a terrible idea. With the increased gain of relations and influence and eventually the heightened gain of food and happiness production, you can accelerate the growth of your domain before shifting focus to warfare or otherwise just aiming for a unifier victory. It's safe to say that, once again, with the introduction of a new faction, Age of Wonders Planetfall is seeing the introduction of several interesting new considerations. The Oathbound Paladins can be absolutely devastating, but without the support of their Seers and their uncanny ability to remove the influence of the Dice Gods, even the most powerful of battlesuits can quickly be taken down. Moving in lockstep is a source of strength for the Oathbound, one that can be easily exploited as a weakness as well. Providence and Precognition can be overwhelmed, despite how insurmountable they might seem, and being able to clear status effects can remove the trouble of adversity or fatalism, allowing enemies of the Oathbound to overcome their fate-bending tricks. 
but with the right operations, doctrines, and tactics, and with the proper use of lordships and a good reputation to top it off, growth-bound warriors will surely bring the world to heel. I hope this video has given you some insight with regards to what you can expect from the Oathbound faction as they join in on the action with the Star Kings DLC. Again, if you're curious about what else the DLC has to offer, or if you're interested in picking it up for yourself, check out the link in the description and pinned comment down below. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.